Do 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 dun 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 and play one of these things. Make sure. You know what? I'll even go to some intro music that we haven't played for ages. How about we try original chord music? Boost this volume up. Yeah. Coming through good. Go, cool. we can just leave that one as is for the moment. Don't need that. Don't particularly need that. Could bring that one up the top. Coolies. Cool, cool, cool. Juan's got a new phone. New phone, which means all of the notes I took for today gone. Really? Yep. <laughs> so, where do you store your notes? Uh, Microsoft OneNote. Ah, uh, no, sorry, that's a lie. Microsoft To Do List. Uh, but I have not gone around to logging that in. I use Evernote, and Evernote is pretty good. So oh, there we go. We got it. I got him. Just in time. Lucky. Right, that sounds all pretty good. So. I won't listen to that anymore. Turn it down a little as well. All right, that stuff's all good. You know what? Why don't we actually start at a minute early today? Let's do it. And I'll run this one. Oh, managed to log in as well on this. Bring my memoirs thing. All right, here we go. Models capable of mistakes. The journey is not here to be agonized upon. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Mere Models Musings. We're up to episode 310, I believe. Ooh. And today you have Kyron here on one side of the microphone. Got one on the other side. The microphone. Or do you? Mm. That's what we're going to be asking today and some hypotheticals. So today is a musing session where we pick a topic, we go deeper on it, it's more focused on the deeper part of the conversations and oh, there'll still be a lighthearted touch but uh, we're not outdoors we're in our little studio here correct and yeah i'll just get into why i chose this topic so okay. sort well, of I'll, let, can i just say can i a hypothetical like don't know how to mute my iphone right now so i'm i'm trying to figure out right what? now how to mute how to mute it That's what do you mean? Uh, well normally so the hypothetical is folks who are listening at home night live <clears throat> you should be able to flick from the top yeah. to go to the place where you can However, what I'm learning is that the iPhone has certain uh, touches, nuances to it. So you have to do like a very slight pull to get notifications and like okay. a hard pull to actually get the rest of it. Okay. So I will try and turn off the notifications, but if you can hear it for the couple of, next couple of minutes, that's no. what I'm trying to do. No, I'm just going to throw it down the stairs. We're going to throw it away. That's, that's what I yep. do. <laughs> okay, so, but hypotheticals. Why? Why do you want to talk about that? Hypotheticals. Yeah, so the reason I wanted to bring this up was uh, it was triggered by a couple of things. One mm -hmm. is this book here. Reasons and Persons by Derek Parfit. Yep. Philosophy. Uh, this is what I've yeah what I've been threatening to do a book review on for about two or three months a now. While. Yeah. It's a, look, it's not the biggest of books in total. Five hundred and forty pages. Uh, if you yeah uh, yeah I'll include it because I have been reading the notes and the appendices. So yeah, it's about five hundred and thirty all up. Mm -hmm. And again, just to and I'm just gonna just jump in here before so I'm gonna annoy you. Ruin the yeah. episode. Grave on nice for iPhones. As you see, see if you pull down from the some particular side, you get notifications. 
but you got to pull from the other side to get the mute. But however, go. folks, I'm muting myself and we're going to be focused Good. back in. Good. Let's go. Well, that was just a shit show, wasn't it? Good. Well, so the reason I, I brought this up was mm. uh, there's quite a lot of hypotheticals in this book. He he uses these these hypotheticals um, to, to sort of illustrate points. If you'll remember back ages ago, I brought mm. up one which I thought was kind of cool about uh, irrationality and why you might want to uh, have... If you could take a pill to be irrational, maybe you'd want to take this. And this was the example of a robber coming into your home and him not being able to threaten you if you're irrational. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we'll get on to why that one in particular is maybe on the surface seems like a a good hypothetical and then can break down pretty quickly. Mm. So that was one of the reasons there was a there was a lot of this of of hypotheticals in this book. And so I wanted to just examine why why that is and then you know they they seem to come up pretty often as well so you for example in the uh, latest meanderings or maybe it was the one before we were were talking about meeting a girl for the for the first time and and talking about short term versus long term Mm -hmm. and you brought up the hypothetical of oh yeah well if you meet her for the first time and then she says that she likes to shoot up heroin all the time and punch her mum in the head Mm. You know, what that, you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that what you're looking at? Like, do you want to use a long-term, short-term mm-hmm. outfit for, for that? And whilst very funny, and I laughed at it a whole bunch of times, did get me thinking, okay, but is this is actually a useful example of mm-hmm. a hypothetical or uh, can we can we do better, I suppose? Okay. So maybe let's start off with, uh, we haven't done a definition for a while, so maybe okay, that'll yeah, be the, the, the place to go. So... Uh, I've, I've just I've just uh, realized as well as you're doing this I haven't even logged into discord to find even any boost for him so I'm going to try and do this as he's doing it live as well um, okay but I will try if not we'll we'll do some we'll do some majigging to find it so well, I've, I've, I've got him on, on my phone so oh, he's on it I, oh, I can I, like I can it. bring it up if, uh, if, if I we want need to. to cool yeah so here okay, we go the definition a hypothetical definition and we'll just see what Google brings up instantly so the first thing it comes up says to uh, as usual, useless, based on or serving as a hypothesis. Let us take a hypothetical definition. The The first thing that Google brings up is always just so just crap. bloody yep, useless. Crap. So, so useless. So typically, um, for those who are just wondering, I typically go to Merriam-Webster, Cambridge is usually pretty good, um, dictionary.com sometimes. My favorite always seems to be the Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. If you just go into type hypothetical wiki definition and then it'll come up with the either the wiktionary or it'll come up with hypothesis uh now that's not exactly what we want so we'll just go with the wiktionary meaning so here are some of them so it says involving or being based on a suggested idea or theory Mm -hmm. um being or uh, or involving a hypothesis so maybe we will check out what that hypothesis actually means uh, uh, imagined or suggested, but not necessarily real or true. So hypothetical there. Um, and then uh, assumed by hypothesis, supposed. Yeah, so I will. Uh, and then based on a hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to have to look up the word hypothesis as well, because that seems to be coming up quite a lot. Now, what do you think of when you think of hypothesis? I always think of elementary science in high school that's, that's yeah you have to I create kinda, a hypothesis <clears throat> that's what i kind of go go towards like a like a, a name a name before you do an experiment yeah okay so the uh, wikipedia says a hypothesis or plural hypotheses is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon for a hypothesis to be a scientific hypothesis which is what i was thinking of mm-hmm. uh, the scientific method requires that one can test it so basically just trying to in this case, explain a phenomenon, but we'll just use these dex- uh, ones over here. I think the best was probably uh, an imagined or suggested, but not su- not necessarily real or true. Um, I think that's a yeah. I a think good, that's good. Although that's actually for the adjective, so I don't know if they've got it for the the noun. But whatever, you get the point. It's a point. it's a situation where you imagine something, and I guess then the the question is, what are you using it for? Hmm. So this is where I was I was um, probably having some problems, particularly with this book, which was, it would bring up a, a lot of different hypotheticals. So uh, quite a few of them were uh, around teletransporters. So this is what would happen if hmm. you uh, imagine the the transporters, the would it be me up Scotty sort hmm. of thing, those, those type of things in, in Star Trek. 
but in this case your body is disintegrated and a new one atom for atom is created exactly somewhere else in the world and he's using this to or in the world or in the universe and so he's then using this to say okay what does it mean to be a person are you a person if this happens what would happen if instead of you getting disintegrated instantly mm. the machine malfunctioned and you got zapped with some radiation and you found out oh i've only got four days left to live mm -hmm. does it comfort you to know that there is an exact replica of you on Somewhere mars else. and how how does one think of their themselves in these sort of situations mm -hmm. what is an, a themself are you the person who's now dying or are you now the person who's been transported to mars which yep. which of these is true so it brings up a, a lot of different things of these and uh honestly i found that as i was going through the book i was realizing i'm getting a bit tired of these i'm not sure they're mm. helping whatever point he's trying to prove here so okay. there was quite a few uh, hypotheses he himself mm. came up or, or at least arguments for why we should think of ourselves not as purely the flesh and bone the atoms in ourselves but mm. also there's an element of psychological continuity uh, con continui continui continuity continuity there you go and so you you know are you you after you've had a sleep are you you after you've had uh, a dose of um, being anesthetized mm. and then wake up like what mm. What you are all these like things? Through yeah. time as well. And then it just started getting to this point where it was like, what, what's going on here? Like, what, are, are these actually uh, useful or not? And so maybe we'll just kick this off with my first question to you. Do you how often do you use hypotheticals in your day-to-day -day life? And what purpose do you use them for? I don't think I use them that many times. But I would, I do use them. Not that it's a lot. <clears throat> and I think I'm, I was trying to think of, I guess, one that I've used uh, recently. Today, I was talking to dad around just world politics, world economies. And there was some hypotheses which were placing around, well, what if China did this? Or what, if you look at the fact that perhaps America looks at things in decades and China looks at things in hundreds of years, what does that ultimately look like? what's an example, what would Australia do? Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So that so would if, be a... If this was this, th what would happen? Yeah, sort of what would like be the eventuality? Like if X, then, then Y. Which I guess yeah. is a hypothesis where we're saying, you know, what what do you think is going to happen? And then you might test it out or time might go on and it actually comes out and reveals what it should be. Yeah. Kind of like our hypotheses when we I guess you could call it that, when we said all the way back in the day, how many people are going to get infected by COVID? How, how much is it going to impact? That could be a hypothesis yeah. in that particular realm of it um so i would say that i i utilize them every now and again i don't what it sounds like from that book is like he's using it all the time like all all the time to, pretty, to display pretty regular yeah, examples I, I would say he would bring it up hmm, probably at one every four to five pages if okay, I did that's guess. a lot that's a lot yeah i, I think that so the, that's sort of like a hundred throughout the book that that sounds that's about right huge, to me. okay my only thought there is that sometimes there's concepts which whether it's a concept of morality, whether it's a concept of logic, that a hypothetical example, one that you perhaps haven't actually lived through and you couldn't really figure out how it would come about, is just so extreme enough or so weird enough that it actually does lie in, in place and be in use and in the conversation. So maybe in that book, he's putting enough ideas into play that are so out there and are so beyond the normal scope of what normal humans interact with that okay you have to go with these random hypothetical examples to try to even come close to it it sounds like maybe not like he sounds like he's like overdoing it uh, the classic one i was reading about was you know the trolley example so the trolley example yeah and there's obviously, the trolley problem there's, for there's those who've never heard of, of, of permutations of it but basically it's like hey you know, you got a trolley that's going to kill one person and would you flip the switch and kill the four people? And then there's like a mix of what if it was your mum? What if it was, you know, all these sorts of things? What if it wasn't you pulling a switch, but you pushing a fat man in front of the trolley? Throwing someone to, on top to of the train. Stop. So there's lots yeah. of different permutations and examples of that. Now, one of the answers you could say to this is, no, I'd call the police, right? So that example there might not be a, a real example, 
you might not push someone in front of the train, like, you know, a fat man onto the train, just stop and kill or someone, you might actually just call ahead the, the cops or try and do something else completely different that's outside what the restriction of that hypothetical, hypothetical example is. But the hypothetical example in that case is built in an extreme sense so that you see morality and you see the choice that you have and all of these sort of things, which I wouldn't say that that's a bad example. I go, yes, it makes you think about that particular thing and it constrains you enough that it forces that, that conversation. If you acted it out like a real example, it might be completely different. So I can get behind hypothetical examples to be used. I can't get behind a hundred of them being used in a book. I, that sounds like, like a, 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 it sounds slightly extreme to me, like a, an overuse of, of examples where maybe it starts, it starts formulating to the point of, okay, we're just talking about not made up stuff, but we're talking on, on realms that is just so beyond that it just, does not really bring anything to the concept here. Yeah, yeah. So here's just like a random one I've chosen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then this is talking about time and different attitudes to time. So he says, case one, I'm in exile from some country where I've left my widowed mother. Though I, though I am deeply concerned about her, I very seldom get news. I've known for some time that she is fatally ill and cannot live long. I'm now told something new. My mother's illness has become very painful in a way that drugs cannot relieve. For the next few months before she dies, she faces a terrible ordeal. That she will soon die, I already knew. But I am deeply distressed to learn of the suffering that she must endure. A day later, I am told that I've been partly misinformed. The facts were right, but not the timing. My mother did have many months of suffering, but she is now dead. So it's sort of like, you know, that's a that's a twofer right there. You, mm. You've got your, your dying mother in another country. She's going to um, experience some suffering and you sort of experience some, uh, not guilt, uh, but there's a there's a feeling that you experience like pity or com compassion or something mm. like knowing like, oh crap, she's going to have all of this ahead of her. Mm. And then vice versa, you just find out, oh, she's already been through all of that and she's already dead now. Mm. And then he dives into that and asks, you know, like, how is this different? How, why should this matter? And, and things like this. Um, now that one's, you know, somewhat realistic. You yeah, could, you could, you could, could, you say could that, somewhat yeah. get behind that mm. one. The, the problem I have is I would say on the vast bulk of them, probably 80% plus, they're just so far ahead of current technology of, mm. you know, he's, he's imagining things like creating an identical clone of you doing the teletransporter thing of uh, imagining situations in a hundred thousand years time what are those people what are our responsibilities to those people then and it's like you know that that one in, in particular is not too bad i guess that's mm. that's something you can sort of do now but there were so many things where i'm just like i feel that it's it's so much far ahead of the technology that when the technology starts to get to that way we will find maybe some restrictions or limitations that he he didn't change it all together yeah that it just mm. completely like it makes it meaningless for example uh, you know when they were first learning about um anesthetizing people mm. that maybe they they sh they all before that all they had was drugs which could um make it appear like the person was was not suffering but there actually were and then it's like oh no no we've we've sort of figured it out you yeah. can kind of i guess he i guess the example so, because it's kind of hard looking forward because you obviously don't know the changes, but you know, back in the day, and we've talked about it on the podcast, where people were scared of driving trains, trains because they yeah. thought that the speed, would, like, a human body wouldn't be able to sustain that particular speed. There could have been conversations then. So, when it comes to the hypotheticals of being realistic and unrealistic, say someone was having conversations in, in line of, hey, will, will this person explode? Or will this person liquefy? You know, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. they're already saying like, for sure this person's going to die. Something bad is happening. But in what way are they going to, you know, die? In, in essence, is what they're trying to say. And so I'd say there that that's a, a hypothetical, which like, to them maybe have some re realistic expectations. I mean, it's not based on any evidence really. And looking back at it, okay, it was completely unrealistic. I guess I have a problem with, because I guess you asked me again, do I use hypotheticals? Yes, I do. But I would have a problem is the hypothetical is such a stretch to the evidence or to the information that is known to you where 
it just gets so out of hand that you might as well just be not talking about it anymore because there's so many variables that could have changed things that the view that you might have on it will just completely vanquish. So, and I think there, a view towards a hypothetical that's a little more realistic is better than one that is completely unrealistic. So, okay, you wouldn't like the, the if you wanted to be probably get a better conversation going in the example that you gave of you know what if this girl was a heroin addict and she go and punch your your mum in the head. Yeah. That's, that's a hypothetical, it's unrealistic. That's unlikely to happen many, many times. And yes, that, that comes out with an extreme answer because you'll go, okay, well, no, obviously I wouldn't do something. But if it was closer to the more reality where maybe the hypothetical there would have been, what if she it was like a has party a problem girl. with depression? Yeah. Or what She's if a party she party girl, girl likes, or, likes to party and you know, has something that's a bit realistic. Had a violent situation with her. Then mom. the conversation might be more nuanced because it is closer to the expectation that you might see and something that you might come across and go, okay, that's more realistic. So I would lean towards hypotheticals that are, that are more realistic. I do think that there's a place and time for hypotheticals that are unrealistic though when it is something that is so completely removed from what we experience, from what we are doing that there's no real comparison and so you you have to go unrealistic to get to the almost like separate thing that you actually want to get to the heart of so if there's a conversation uh, i don't know about you know humans becoming basically demigods because of chips in their brain and becoming semi-bionic or something along the lines Mm. maybe it's coming maybe it's not but you might go completely unrealistic and go okay well once we're all chipped in into the matrix and everything's going down do you think it's you'll care about dogs? Yeah, yeah. What's our what's our responsibility to alien life because we're so powerful that we could perhaps be bending time and, and things something like wild, right? Like, oh, so okay, then, yeah. so it's unless yeah, and I can't really think of something that would pair it, but it'd be a really unrealistic expectation or hypothesis. But if it was to to draw out a a thought or an idea or something else that only really kind of observes if this particular like future comes about. Okay, fine. I can get behind that. Or you're just having like an absolute shit piss joke. So in our conversations that we've had before of, you know, what what would be quicker getting to the center of the earth or going to Jupiter and back? Yeah, well, I've I've actually got that listed down. So I'll I'll get into some of these now. Mm. Um, So I I created a little list here of... uh, Unrealistic hypotheticals? No, it was just where I think they're used, like yes and no. Where they're useful and where they're not. Where they're useful and where they're not. And like the different types because... Uh, I've actually sort of came to the conclusion it's more, it's more the intent behind it. So it's it's why it's coming up and how it's being used, mm-hmm. rather than its degree of realness or truthfulness, perhaps, or it's it's cl- you know the closer it is to reality, because mm-hmm. you could you could say you know a hypothetical, um, the the sun is going to rise tomorrow. It's like okay, well, yes, it is a hypothetical. But that one's almost a certainty. Mm. You know, there's the, the probability of that is incredibly high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's there's sort of certain certain situations where it seemed like the it was, it was more the intent behind it rather than a blanket yes or no. Although I would probably agree with you, mm. I, I I would lean towards ones at least in my everyday day to life day to day life where it it's something that could happen like mm. it's you know if you had to put a percentage on it you could say yeah oh, yeah you know this has a one percent chance or higher of of, of occurring occurring mm. versus some of these which are just the they're so many layers deep that it's just you know if you had to chuck some numbers on it it would it would be you know one in a million one in a trillion one in yeah something it, ridiculous it, yeah etc et mm. billion um, I'm just actually thinking like I didn't have too much else other than than these notes, so maybe we'll do some boostergrams and then go to the yes or no. Because okay. uh, I've got a couple of notes. I've still got oh, a couple used to more. It? Yep. Okay, all, all right, right. I'm go there. all right. Well, I'll I'll do my ones and then boostergrams and then then cool. we can do yours. All right. So basic basic uh, things that I've written down is um, yes, sort of proxy for analogies or to prove why a point taken to an extreme will produce bad results. Mm-hmm. So an example of this is. The repugnant conclusion, if you've heard of that before. So this is a, a sort of a moral philosophy thing. He brings it up in here, which is uh, if you had five, uh, you know, how, how can you judge what is the best the best sort of situation for the world? And right. uh, you've got 
uh, however you measure human happiness or well-being or whatever metric it is that you want to use, you mm-hmm. can just say at least whatever is better than it is worse. Uh, is it better for a uh, hundred people to have this very high and then only a hundred people, or would it be better to have a thousand people with maybe just as like a slight tiny little bit less than that? And you mm-hmm. could go, yeah, you know what? I think the thousand people, that's probably the general conclusion. It's better to have more people with more happiness. Quantity is, is, uh, is, is a good thing in itself. Right, like right. if you can multiply like that, if you then continue that math on though, you would end up saying, okay, probably the best world that's possible could be one which is has trillions and trillions and quadrillions and an absurdly high number mm-hmm. of people all just just barely being above what you would consider a good life like they like they had fractionally above it yeah, yeah yeah like they maybe have a whole life which is just filled with sort of blandness and then they maybe got you know a, a nice firm handshake or someone told them there was they were pretty once okay and you could then say, oh, but because there's so much quantity. It's the same. It's it's the same, maybe even uh, desirable. Maybe that's what you'd actually want mm-hmm. if you're just using a quantity square, scale of, of this. So this mm-hmm. is where sort of the repugnant conclusion, most people would also go, oh, no, we don't want that. So it's then saying, okay, quality also, the balance? Matters. Yeah. also matters. So that's, I think that sort of thing where it's it's proving like, Hey, don't go too far on one way because you mm. you'll, you'll get tripped up, and once again a, a sort of a very hard to imagine situation. But it's it sort of just proves a point like don't don't go too far. Mm. So I think I think that's a, a useful case for them um, for fun, obviously. So mm. we talked about the flying lion versus dolphin, where the only outcome is an amusing conversation. You know, there's nothing else that's trying to be gotten at. I'm yep. not. I'm not looking into your personality mm-hmm. because y- you know you choose a flying dolphin, and you know that's obviously the wrong choice, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, anything simple that is obviously reasonable and no one can de- deny. So you know, uh, a classic one would be, maybe be you'd probably know this one. Don't slam the door shut or don't open the door so violently. Your sister could be behind it, mm. so, sort of thing. You know that that's like okay, yeah, I could imagine that. Mm. I could also imagine why that would smash her in the face and yep. and this could cause drama in the household and then we sort of talked about the scientific ones so the scientific hypoth- hypotheticals where it can be tested usually pretty readily i, I imagine mm. most scientific tests granted there's ones that go over years and things like that but those are the ones that are actually you know i would i would have more questions and doubts upon whereas mm. the the yes or no kind of like let's test this out over the next week type of ones i think i think those are better yeah uh any any that you would add to to that sort of list mm, not spe- not explicitly not explicitly okay cool the the other ones the so the no ones mm. um i would say ones that defy the law of physics you know if if you're trying to wow. be in a serious type of way um so yes you can have ones that Funny ones that defy the laws of physics, maybe a flying line. Well, here's, a here's probably a little example one day. So I'm reading <clears throat> Stephen Hawking's um, big answer, the big question. I actually don't even know the title of, this, okay. of the book, yeah. but it's about physics. It's about him answering big, big, big questions. things, big questions. Big things, big yeah. questions. I literally have, <laughs> don't even, I don't think I've checked what the bloody title of this yeah, book you. is. But in in part of it, he's, he's answering a question but answering it by answering a couple of other questions. And some of the questions that he's answering is around uh, the universe, the version of M theory and for M theory to actually work, there needs to be 11 different um, spaces basically, or dimensions. And okay. so we, we experience three fourth and time. And then the other seven basically are all tied up in a Taurus basically with all knotted up and we can't experience it and etc. all these things. And so you could get taken into this absolute extreme that, you know, perhaps as part of M theory, how you could experience these seven dimensions or what that would entail and how it would change gravitational force or electromagnetic force. And, and perhaps the theory or the, the idea that you might place could be a theory that could be talked about, but it's so beyond the physics of what we even experience or is even part of the conversation. It's like, okay, why even it's just it is like you just using completely different laws because i guess under that theory or some of the m theories it's like you know you can do a 
this universe that got created and this created humans and humans are thinking about how the universe was created and that however you could have had a different universe where humans didn't exist and we didn't ask that question but he kind of poses well there is actually a, a particular like theory or this thing describing that particular thought process it's like well there's no point thinking about that because we wouldn't be humans in that space to think about that stuff so in a, in a similar way it's like these theories or hypotheticals mm. where it's almost like well why even think about that like humans wouldn't even be there so like that makes no sense yeah i think i uh i think i was thinking about this which was more along the lines of you know einstein thinking of all these things back in the time and you could say oh okay yeah that was a good hypothetical it, it actually produced some results in the world and stuff mm. but you know for me man that's not useful that's... well yeah okay here's the direct example that i can remember so um stephen hawking was saying so with gravitational pull it is a squared inverse squared gravitational pull right now so if you are let me see if i can get my maths right say if, uh, if two objects are two meters apart or whatever it may be if you pull them four meters apart the gravitational pull on each other because it's uh, inverse squared it's actually so it'd be one over two squared to one over four squared okay so it's it like decreases by an inverse square okay I think that's about right let's just let's just say it's some number like that but if there was an extra dimension that you want to talk about that would become cubed so it would be one over cubed so then the gravitational force would be way looser yeah and on and on it goes so you could have this conversation it's like well what if there was eight dimensions and you know then the moon flies away and yeah then, yeah the seven suns what if there were seven suns you know and... at that point you're, you're kind of going okay it's kind of aligned with physics but holy hell like how are we going to imagine how does that even make any sense to anything that we're even describing are we like do we even exist in such a in such a universe in that point it's like i don't know who knows you can't really be talking about it yeah yeah so i should maybe add you know this is for almost for me for example yeah. so i would say in general yes and but you know there's outlier cases where mm. maybe that sort of stuff is useful for their job or for i mean we are mere mortals so i'm gonna say uh, i would say it'd be like for fun the, to, unless you're yeah deep in some sort of like theories which perhaps is useful in those small little pieces mm. uh, i'd say by the by just be for fun yeah one thing I, I took from this book was the triple or even quadruple negatives so you can have double negatives you know imagine if you didn't do this thing so that's like that's one then mm -hmm. it's like uh imagine if you didn't do this and um uh like what wouldn't ne be your reaction never in that? Ha never have i ever not not gone or something like yeah, that. yeah 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 he does that a couple of times i don't yeah. know if he gets into quadruple but certainly triple negatives there's there's ones where i was just like <laughs> uh okay let me s s set a minute aside to really try and <laughs> just think think about through. what what you're getting maybe that's great uh for some people for me that's well that's why this book has taken me a long time and also yep. if, maybe that's why i'm struggling with it so much is because it's i've been reading it over a long time and it's yeah. just i've forgotten everything, everything that happened gone through. you know from a from a month ago uh I, I how how things would be different if only x so this is more on the personal scale of of, of pity for example mm. so playing the victim or uh, if things were like this uh, i would have done this uh if if this had happened this way this would have happened and then i would have True. gotten this thing so i suppose ones where you were you trying to use it for pity or or for self self-pity or or those those sort of yeah there's there's a certain type of argument where you yeah, can, I agree. can yep. do that those ones i'm i would say are mostly useless that, and... they, they, yeah they don't even sit with well, between a level of realistic to unrealistic i just think that they're just useless hypotheticals pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. uh and then there's a this is getting again into like the utility of it why someone would be using it so you're trying to break boundary lines that that are there for a reason so for example uh, one of our little clips that uh, is, is semi-popular is when we're discussing the hypothetical that <laughs> this lady chucked out on a show was of, of a cooking show, which she was talking yeah. about macaroni or something. There's an Italian guy and he goes, uh, and she asks, you know, if we added ham, this would be like a carbonara. Mm -hmm. And and then he loses his shit and goes, you know, if, uh, if my grandma had wheels, should have been a bike. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what are you even talking about? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, now that, that sort of case where it's, yeah, you say something and it's a hypothetical, but it's just, 
it's sort of like a pointless breaking of a definition. Mm. You know, if I had wings, I'd have been a bird as well. Mm. It's like, what the fuck does that, like, yeah, how does yeah, that yeah. help anything? What, yeah. What's the point of bringing that up? So, yeah, there was, there was sort of, I, I guess for me, the, the general takeaway that I've gotten from thinking about this is it's more the intent behind their use rather than the actual hypothetical itself. Mm. So, it's more why someone's trying to do it. So, if they're trying to really think, think deeply into physics and and this might in in some way not even mathematically have any implications although for some people it did like einstein we use it his equations for to make gps work and things like that uh, but if if you're doing it for a for a sort of like certain certain reason it's more about the reason that mm. that counts so if you're trying to use like win an argument by by making someone look like a fool by dumbing something down that's actually complex no that's that's not oh, well, and i would say if, if you, you are lean towards being realistic as opposed to unrealistic yeah yeah, yeah. if you're trying to if you're trying to generate pity and and uh, you know try and make yourself feel better mm-hmm. probably not the the best but yeah those, those are sort of a useful tool of language and abstract thinking but mm-hmm they can they can be abused as well is what i would say yeah yeah i think they have a probably a more of a way to be uh, misused than actually be useful in in all yeah, the other times could be, Sorry. Could be. um any comments at all uh, no, no, up, we, uh, no one's uh peter's got work tonight everyone else has been um I don't know, just missing in action. Busy. Okay. Well, let's let's run through through some boost grams. Boost grams. So you're going to have to do it because I can't even log in to Discord right now. Damn. Because it has a two-factor authentication. Yeah. And the way the two-factor authentication with Google works is that it will not turn into this phone, but turn it only only to the previous phone. And you know how you have to get around it? You have to go and take off two-factor authentication where you're logged in. Uh, log in and then re-enable to like, authentication so of course dang. that's how it works good all right well here we go i will be the one running the booster grams okay. today so we've got uh, one from pitar uh, received on june 19th and this is sent through fountain Fifty thousand sats Woo-hoo-y. that's big boy sats thank uh, you very much yes pitar. very big boy sats uh i actually um yeah, for the I'll, I'll repeat it again. Peter is the I would say the the boostergram king at the moment across all across like podcasts in terms of the volume that he's sending and then also the the quantity in that in that volume is, yeah. is uh, has been pretty insane. And he says uh, I'm definitely working towards my master's degree in park philosophy thanks to you two. Thumbs up. Hey, thank you, Peter. Yeah, uh, we have read that one out already. Have we, we? read that, out that last one? Time. Yep. One hundred percent. Okay. All right. So, okay. Th- that must have occurred on the Must have been like on the day. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Then the two that I've got here. So, we talked about Floydian slips and you just said yay as well mm-hmm. last time. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Then uh, there's two then. So, the two that I have, one is uh, from Dave Jones, the Dave. pod sage himself, sent using Castomatic, And he says, bug binder foost. Bug finder boost. Thanks, Kyle. Bug finder boost. And this is the, two, the sent- bug that you found... Um, yeah, a two one 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 two set sent using a customatic. Yeah, uh, so essentially, I just noticed the value for value wasn't updating. Yep, I tried to do things on my end in terms of just updating the feed as if to like kickstart it mm-hmm. to to get it um, seen. Uh, waited a day or two. It's funny because he was he's you know he's like thanking me, whereas I feel like man, <laughs> I should thank, thank you, thank you, Dave, for fixing my problem. You yeah. know, it's it's you know it's. It's me. It's, it's it's me like the one that should... I feel like I, I should have more responsibility in, in knowing like, oh, okay, this isn't... I guess when it's like really broken. self-custodial, you know, like when you're, you're completely running it, what well, you're trying to run it basically on your own, it's like, oh, damn, it's like someone else trying to yeah, help this me is, to get this yeah. fixed. You know, if it, if it was uh, just like Buzzsprout, for example, which I notice sometimes it does require that little kickstart from me. Mm. Um, uh, that in that case, you know, if... It's kind of less responsibility because mm-hmm. we're we're paying for for a service, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, uh, very cool that he he's thanking mm-hmm. me, whereas I feel like I should be you know <laughs> thanking him for for helping sort my problems. And then we got a, a big one here. This was uh, we we got this one today from who other other than Peter. Peter. It's gonna be, and he sends uh, twenty five thousand. <sighs> Woo! 
Woo! Woo! You're still coming through with big boy. Sent you're using Curacaster. Interesting. Not, didn't get any fountain ones yeah. this week. And he says, uh, are you lying? So on, online. Oh, yes. There's so, a lying one. Yeah. And there's a, there's a decent sized message here. So he said, uh, there was a period in my life where I was painfully honest in every single interaction. After a while, I discovered this way of living made me really miserable. So the... I that's actually in the Sam Harris book where uh-huh. he, he goes on and, and doing it. And it's funny that uh, Sam didn't talk about him becoming miserable from this. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Peter is saying he, he tried that. And uh, I wonder how he went about it. If it was really front of mind all the time, like you'd sort Peter. of have to make it front yeah. of mind all you'd the time to. To, mm. to do that. He then says, there was another period in my life where I didn't care in the least bit how many lies i told after a while i discovered this way of living made me really miserable so there you go so he's he's gone to to both ends of the spectrum looking back i can't help but think about a quote from one of those boring old-timey philosophers kierkegaard about how you will always have regret regardless that's yeah. true it, it, uh, i mean that's a great point peter um the other point of course is towards the dichotomy i think you gotta find the balance in between i, I don't think that well, I definitely don't think that always lying is a good thing. And I think you're going to find some mystery in that. But telling the truth always, no matter what, no matter any situation, I think you're in for some suffering as well. There, Un- like unnecessary suffering that you're going to share in, in striving for that. Yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably sway towards trying to tell more of the truth than none of the truth. But yeah, that either end of the extremes is probably not what you want to yeah. end up. Like I'm, I'm 99.5% truth telling so i don't i don't even jokingly tell lies sort of the way one mm. does they're so like like for those at home one all, all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one's one's uh, yeah a joke. if you're laughing there's probably a, there's probably a lie in there yeah like genuinely yeah but but even then it's like oh yeah i'll be home in 20 minutes and he'll be home in one minute like mm. that it's not really funny mm. like I, it's just yeah it just gets introduced uh, yeah. no matter what <laughs> um but yeah yeah i it's not just a dichotomy, but I guess finding on the balance where it should be. Because um, sometimes when I hear dichotomy, I just think, oh, you need to be right in the middle. Yeah, is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, which I is think not, it's just, not helpful. No, so it's going to, yeah, I'd, I'd say it is somewhere between the two points, but I'd go towards the trying mm. to be more truthful than, than not. But this is why I really like Peter, though. He does shit like this. You know, mm. there's the kind of thing that I might have done once upon a time. I wouldn't do it now, but. Mm. That that kind of oh you know trying what, both sides just to see yeah how I'll, I'll try this happen. thing and see how it happens so and then I'll try this thing and see how it happens yeah. uh, I feel like I've lost a little bit of that to be honest actually in the over the last little period um, but hey what can you say cool all right that's our boostergram so everyone uh, very good thank you are, appreciate are it just wondering go to newpodcastapps.com. Mm-hmm. Choose one of the ones for value and we ask you to send in a a message attached um, with some satoshis it's a way of directly interacting with us uh in a way that makes sense so sending us a message for example in the app that you're using and that it comes directly to us brilliant brilliant turn off your phone one well i'm just i just man all these things i'm just so incredibly no. dumb about no, however no there one. is a point there is a point that i had in here that i did want to talk about um which is my final point it was okay. more around answering hypothetical questions so if you have People who are asking you hypotheticals that perhaps are not as realistic. They're going towards the unrealistic, how you might approach it. So, yes, we just talked about whether, again, you know, from you yourself, how you might approach using hypotheticals if you do use them. But what if you have a lot of people around you using hypotheticals or you might be reading such a book and you go, okay, this is actually too unrealistic or it's realistic. So some of the things that I was finding just doing a little quick search and sort of thinking to myself was... Um, answering back with a bit more generality in the in the regards to what you're saying so if someone's talking to you and placing forward a hypothetical that's really unrealistic not in a joking way but expecting like a real answer yeah more along the lines of generalizing the answer so if someone's asking you that if you were a mars and you had two alien girlfriends come up to you and one's got three eyes and the other one's got four arms which one do you marry that perhaps if you if in that in serious like it's not funny like this is like a, like a serious answer of some kind that you might go towards a generality of well just in general i would prefer three eyes and four arms or something along yeah those well, lines. well even the trolley problem so yeah. if someone actually said to you what would you he, you are actually here mm. like right now 
tra- you're transported right now. Hmm. You're in front of this. You see a train coming. You see it's going to hit one person. You see, you you assume like, oh, if I pull this lever, it'll go on to this other. Tra- uh, sorry, it's going to hit five people. If I pull this lever, it's going to on hmm. another track, which will kill that that other person is over there. What are you actually going to do? Like mm. gun to your head, yeah, sort like, of what are you thing. Say? Yeah, and, I think- and, and that that's just that's where I would just be going. This this is just not useful. Like there's not. I don't know how I can answer this. Like yeah. how I'd, I'd freeze up. Is that the answer you want? I'm not even yeah, making I went a doing choice. Things, yeah, uh, I'm not. It's not that I'm I'm making a choice one way or another. It's it's just that a choice has not been made. Is that what you fucking want to hear? I think because that's what will probably happen. Yeah, I think the other <laughs> thing is yeah, in generality, like you could say, it's a uh, like I just I'd probably just be driven by my emotions in whatever way. Whether you're frozen, whether it's Someone telling you that it's like a person you know versus five people you don't know. You'll just be driven purely as by an emotional being and that's it. That's what you'll do. Like, I don't know what it'll be, but that's what you'll, is going to happen. And that's really all you can answer. So there's a little bit of that. And some of the things actually I was finding was trying to pin it back to facts. So whether maybe you are actually proposing a hypothetical that seems a little bit unrealistic or someone else is, is trying to parlay the conversation to go back to some facts. So again, if someone's saying an example there perhaps you might go to some facts around, you know, where's, is there any other people around, you know, do I actually have a, no other choices? Facts that maybe center it towards more of a reality or realistic expectation. So going back to the original one that we mentioned at the start of this podcast, if someone says that, you know, what if you come across a girl who's heroin and punches you know, your mum in the head, then maybe you're trying to be more matter of fact and be like, well, how am I meeting this human being? Like, that sounds like an unrealistic person. Where would they be? How would I come across that? To try maybe force the hypothetical to be more realistic. Mm. If, if that sort of human just doesn't actually exist. You know, if someone's saying a human that's won the lottery 22 times, um, but they have no legs and, but they can seem like Adele. Okay. Like, where am I meeting this human? How you know, how probable is this? What's going on? So, <laughs> yeah. something along those lines in, in terms of doing that. Um, and then you could go all the way to the extreme of uh, calling out the missing information. So, I think if someone hit me up with a hypothetical that was too unrealistic and you, you don't really have the availability to just be like, no, this is completely dumb. Maybe centering the, the fact around calling out missing information. So, calling out, oh... Yeah, I can't really answer that without knowing this, 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 this. That makes it more realistic. And so it kind of puts the ball back in their court that if you actually want an answer from you, that you're probably going to have to fill in some information here to make it slightly more realistic and more informational and valuable to what you're doing. Um, but on the polar opposite, if you're answer- if you're po- posing a hypothetical to, to someone and you can spot yourself all of this missing information that I guess is the variables and I guess this falls in line with if you're making hypotheticals are so far in the future that there's so many variables in there that you just haven't been answered and you kind of have to get a really, like any sort of valuable answer, then it might give you a hint of, oh, okay, there's maybe the variables or the statistics here or the ratios are so wild that it's that's actually, unless it's fun, it's not actually a, a valuable conversation to, to have. And maybe in, in you know the way this book lays it out, perhaps there might be some hypotheticals there that it's like, okay, there's too many variables here that could be completely different. I don't know how much, how valuable this is. Maybe you should have just stuck with not using a hypothetical and just saying, hey, this is like, this is a particular line of thought that I have and, on, and this philosophy. Yeah, yeah. The other problem with this is I'm, I'm finding it really hard to, to bring it back to why I should care at all. So he makes some good points mm. in, in some regards and... and and there are some things where it, it does make you think, oh, okay, yeah, I, uh, I can see why this, you know, I shouldn't, why thinking this way might lead to, uh, you know, a tremendous harm in this situation, in this hypothetical situation, which is kind of unrealistic. But yeah, I can see that. But how's, how, what should I do with this? Is this, is this really useful at, at all, to be honest? And I felt that was like a, a fair chunk of that going on. Yeah, I will, I, I will stick my neck out here. So I don't know if the immortalized will agree with me or not. But I think uh, doing hypotheticals on the future is okay, even if it's unrealistic to a point. Obviously, I'd say sway towards being more realistic, but you can have fun with it and be unrealistic. That's, that seems cool. I think that there is no real value from a, a reasonable conversation to do hypotheticals of the past. 
Okay. I, I feel like there's very little value to be had in any conversation, even if it's close to uh, a realistic expectation. Perhaps I might way, but if it's really unreal, unrealistic, I just go. I don't know what the value of that is at all. I don't. I can't fathom in my mind somewhere where it would be uh, a good conversation to have and that has value to today's world. And, I, and what I'm thinking there is something along the lines of. What if Hitler hadn't killed himself? What if nuclear, uh, like a bomb had been dropped? You know, because then you just open yourself up to, well, what if an alien dropped the bomb? You know, what if hmm. the sun disappeared? What if the universe crunched? Yeah, well, I suppose it's because you can actually do something about the, the future ones, whereas the past is it's just set in stone. It's yeah, it's kind of like, well, that's not what happened. This is what happened. And <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, we can change it. Okay, you can make up any like storyline of what might have happened, but it is what it has happened. And I don't know if, any conversation of what stream of, you know, idea might've gone through would be worth it. Apart from perhaps some where it's, you know, really close to reality on, you know, can you see what's happened in the past so that you can learn from it in the future? Mm. Something along those lines of, you know, maybe like a tactic where, you know, you might be doing a, I'm thinking like a Jocko-esque style thing where you might do close combat um, shooting and someone does something wrong. And so you might run a hypothetical of, you know, if you had to go left instead of right, this would happen, this would happen, this would happen, let's run it again and let's improve on it. Something along those lines, maybe. But yeah, I, I find it difficult with the hypotheticals in the past. That's, okay. That seems like a... And I'm, now that I'm even calling it out, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I myself will stop using hypotheticals in the past unless it's absolutely needed. Okay. But hypotheticals in the future? Yeah. Cool. Go for yeah. that. I, I wouldn't say I have the same um, aversion to them that, mm. that you do. But I, I think I enjoy history books maybe a bit more than you do as well, yeah. which is a lot of those, are, you know, they'll be disputing some facts. And so it's like, what if this was actually the, the case? And so it's sort of, you know, sometimes it's it's just, it's coming up with a hypothetical on something that's maybe not 100% certain. So okay. that can be kind of useful. Well, I can kind of get in line with that because the hypothetical of it's but, close yeah, to reality, yeah. but not, for, not hypothetical. Facts, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, just to end this off, mm-hmm. uh, Jazz says, uh, some would argue that not making a choice is a choice though, regardless of intention, uh, intentionality or not. I would agree with that. And then I would also just add to that, you know, my choice is, is uh, my no choice is a choice, mm-hmm. but it's sort of like a third one. So it's not it's not the yes or no, I'd pull the lever. Mm. It's it's adding a third one. And then if we're doing that, then I also want to add one and another one. And uh, another one. Uh, yeah. I, I, I run away from the situation. Mm. I, um, s- Superman that hoe and like stop in front of the train and just stop the train. You know, mm. that's, that's also a, a choice. Mm. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and that's why that, uh, when, you know, depends on the boundaries that you set on the particular hypoth- hypothesis, because, if you just have two choices, well, that seems very unrealistic. Uh, you know, a normal human doesn't operate in that way. There's yeah. going to be many, many, many different variations. For sure. All right. Well, uh, to finish us off, I'm going to create a hypothetical for those at that home. Okay. What What happens if you don't boostergram us? <laughs> the mere models goes away. That's what happens. We rely on your support mm-hmm. to continue this podcast. We want to make this a uh, a sustainable project, mm-hmm. for a sustainable. I, I would even call it a lifestyle. Um, and that that requires you know tremendous effort on on both of our parts to, on the editing on the creating of topics of bringing up things of continually trying to make the best uh, podcast we can and also uh, bringing you guys as much value as as possible mm-hmm. with the t-shirts for example ones demonst- demonstrating one as we speak uh, with some other potential goodies in the future and so we just ask that whatever you value this podcast at you send us some of that value back. Now you can do this with treasure. So this is a payment of Satoshis. This is mm-hmm. the only way we particularly want to receive it. Yep. So if you're in your a good podcasting app, you'll you will see that uh, there's a whole bunch of extra features that go uh, go on in, in there. Yeah, there'll be chapter markers, for example. I put those in every single episode. So it helps you jump around go to places you find interesting Mm -hmm. and you can also message us directly from in within the app it makes sense people it just bloody makes sense makes sense uh so if you haven't used it you got to try it because it is it is pretty fun yeah so uh you can one will be probably testing out i'll be getting one to test out some of uh some of the apps which we haven't had before correct Um, castomatic for Uh, example on his new apple shiny Mm -hmm. apple phone 
So yeah, I'd, I'd just recommend going to Fountain. You can use that on any of them. Um, if you're on your laptop, Curacaster, Podverse, those are the decent ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Castomatic, if you've got an Apple phone, plenty of different options for you to, to choose from. Breeze, I haven't mentioned that in a long time. Um, that's yeah, also, I don't, I don't. It's, it's hard, man. Uh, yeah. I, I don't use it at, at all anymore because it mm. just it, it drains my battery and it's hard. <laughs> so... But yeah, there's plenty of different uh, options and choices for you out there. Many different hypothetical apps for you to choose from. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll uh, leave it out there for today. Thank you everyone for tuning in, joining in. Wani. Thank you, folks. That's it for the Mere Mortal Line. Me Mortals. Today's musings. Wani out. Carno. Good. 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 Coolies. Thank you for how many people? Three people on the stream. So I know, I think all three of them, to be honest. This is my brother. Good. This is Jazz. Good. And then I think me. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Cheers, everyone. Peace. Thank you.